Hello, good morning to one. Hello, thank you all. Welcome to today's webinar on Italy Pharmaceuticals conducted by. Welcome to our own regulation of pharmaceuticals. So, ah, sponsored by Siddhartha Academy of General and Technical Education. The webinar is conducted by the Department of Pharmaceutical Chemistry, KVSR Siddhartha College of Pharmaceutical Sciences, in association with Association of Pharmaceutical Teachers of India, AP State Branch. So, now I would like to request Dr. B. Anbamagaru, HOD of Pharmaceutical Chemistry, KVSR Siddhartha College of Pharmaceutical Sciences to address the introduction and theme of our today's seminar. Over to Anpama, Madam. Uh, thank you, Sarla, Madam. Good morning, one and all. Welcome to the today's webinar on Pegylation of Pharmaceuticals, organized by Department of Pharmaceutical Chemistry, KVSR SCOPS. The main topic today is Pegylation of Pharmaceuticals. This is the current topic. The pegylation is a process to improve the retention time of the pharmaceuticals. And also, pegylation of proteins and peptides and overview of the chemistry. I'm sure this topic will give a good source of knowledge on pegylation and marketed pegylated products, etc. Now I request our now I request our principal sir, Daval Rao Garu, please give a message on this webinar. Sir, uh, thank you, Arbama. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, is it audible? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, thank you, Dr. Anbama and uh, Dr. Sarla Devi, uh, Dr. Sarita, Dr. Devadas from Department of Pharmaceutical Chemistry. Very good morning to all of you. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank Dr. Anbama, HOD of Pharmaceutical Chemistry, Department of Pharmaceutical Chemistry, uh, for arranging a nice talk on uh, pegylation of pharmaceuticals by an eminent scientist. Kiran Mayi Penmasa, Senior Scientist of uh, Formulations uh, Research and uh, Development, Nectar Therapeutics, uh, India Private Limited, Hyderabad. So, pegylation, just now I think uh, Arbama has told, and today uh, uh, Kiran Mayi is going to explain in detail about this process also. Uh, as far as my uh, little knowledge is concerned, uh, it's a very, uh, what is known as the uh, novel process, and uh, I can say it is a new process also uh, for the, what is known as the uh, uh, amalgamation, I can say it is called amalgamation, where uh, drug is uh, mixed with uh, polyethylene glycol, whereby we will get what is called a new moiety or molecule, and uh, it, it will have what is called a better therapeutic activity. I think all of you know. Other than only they are doing this process. So anyhow, definitely uh, the uh, excellent, uh, what is known as the scientist, uh, Karen Mayi, she is going to explain in detail about this process. Uh, I don't want to take uh, much of the time also. With this, a few remarks. Uh, once again, I congratulate the, the Department of Pharmaceutical Chemistry, KVSR, Siddhartha College of Pharmaceutical Sciences, and our management also for supporting us with doing this kind of uh, uh, various webinars in this pandemic situation of COVID-19. And uh, I, I uh, request all the participants and uh, students or uh, teachers uh, to utilize uh, the talk going to be delivered by uh, Kiran Mayi from Nectar Therapeutics. Thank you, Arbama. Arbama? Anpama, I the Miro, maybe mute chain, unmute chain. I thank you, sir. Ma, good luck, sir. Better. Well, well, well. Ah, better, better. Let me round this little thing, ma. Ah, good. Good luck, sir. Please go, sir. Ah, chair, good luck, sir. Hello. Ah, madam, I'm going to be standing on Japanese. 
Ah, so I welcome Kiran, my senior scientist, Nectar Therapeutics Limited. Thank you for accepting our invitation. Thank you, Kiran, my now. Sarita Madam will give a brief introduction about the today's resource person. Thank you, Madam. Good morning, one and all. I, Dr. K. Sarita, Faculty of Pharmaceutical Chemistry Department, extend a warm welcome to all of to this webinar on pegylation of pharmaceutical organized by KVSR Siddhartha College of Pharmaceutical Sciences and sponsored by Siddhartha. Siddhartha Academy of General and Technical Education. It gives me an immense pleasure in introducing today's speaker, Kiran Mai Penmesta, working as senior scientist FRND at Nectar Hyderabad. Kiran Mai Penmesta has completed her graduation from Guide College of Guide School of Pharmacy, Rajmandri, and post graduation from Chalpati Institute of Pharmaceutical Sciences. Coming to her professional uh, experience. She started her career as research executive in FRND at Biofor India. She worked as senior research executive and in FRND Technology Transfer Hospira Healthcare Chennai. Worked as team leader formulation development at New Hit Pharma Technologies. And coming to her technical profile, formulation development and optimization of stable parenteral drug products, including small molecules, peptides, biologics and pegylated NCEs for US, Europe, and India. She is good in exper experimental planning and design, execution of studies, and interpretation of results, applying quality of design, and design of experiments to enhance product quality and reduce risk in projects using quality risk and management tools. And she is expertised in lyophilization process development also. And uh, her career achievements, she developed uh, two NCEs and uh, about 20 uh, more than 25 parenteral products she faced she faced regulatory audits in usfda mhra and healthcare canada she won second prize for the post presentation held at hospera healthcare chennai in the year 2012 she was awarded as best scientist of the year 2015 at new head pharma technologies for delivering two challenging projects ma'am we are very happy to have you here so now you can start your lecture, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am, for your uh, nice introduction. Thank you. I hope I'm audible to you all. Uh, a very good morning to you all, uh, and a warm welcome to today's uh, uh, topic, uh, pegylation of pharmaceuticals. First of all, I would like to thank uh, everyone who have, uh, who have participated for today's session, and special mention to Anukuma ma'am and uh, Deval Rao sir, for inviting me as a host for uh, as a speaker for today's presentation. Uh, so now uh, the topic for today is pegylation of pharmaceuticals. Uh, so it's not much explored in uh, you know in the scenario of academics. So even when I was also a student, uh, I was not much aware. I mean, I had just read uh, theoretically of what pegylation is and how products can be formed with the pegylation technology. But honestly, I was not uh, you know practically exposed to this technology. Only when I had entered the industry, I got to know, uh, got exposed to the techniques of uh, pegylation and what are the benefits that we could get uh, to the pharmaceuticals with pegylation. Uh, so now uh, in today's session, let me also introduce you to the world, world of possibilities using pegylation technology. And uh, so this topic will be like a very basic thing where, you know, I'll be just introducing you to the concept of pegylation and then we'll see a little touch up on the care, basic chemistry of how the pegylation could be achieved. Uh, and then mostly I'll be focusing on the marketed products that are already there with the pegylation, pegylated molecules, which are already there in the market and what benefits that they have brought us when compared to the name molecules. So that's the topic uh, for today. Now, I hope my screen is uh, visible to you all. No, madam, you can share the screen. Screen is not visible. Okay, sure. Yeah, now you can share. Yeah, yeah. Yes, madam. So is this visible now? Yeah, yes, madam. Yes. Okay. 
Okay. So now, uh, as the speakers, I mean, earlier speakers have already mentioned about a uh, brief about the pecanylation technology. So pecanylation is nothing but attaching a peg molecule, which is like polyethylene glycol molecule to any given molecule. So mostly we'll be having many drugs in the market and some of them will be having bioavailability issues, solubility issues, uh, or, uh, you know, efficacy issues. You know, having higher dose which will not be acting. So all these could be the possible problems for the drugs that which are already developed. So when we pegylate, you know, when we uh, introduce pegylation technology to those molecules, we can, you know, uh, we can. There are many possibilities of enhancing all those, uh, you know, to to overcome all those problems. So, so that's the best uh, thing about pegylation technology. Uh, so now here I would like to explain it with an example here. Okay, so now here uh, there are two things. One is a protein molecule or any drug for that matter. So we have a, a molecule here and then we have a peg molecule here, which is polyethylene glycol. So when these two molecules are combined, we get a peg conjugate, which is called pegylated protein, protein conjugate in this case, because we are attaching the peg molecule here to the uh, protein molecule here. So in this case, we have uh, an example protein where the amine group along with uh, glutamine, we have amino acid here. So here with the help of transglutamase, this glutamine is removed and the MPEG, methoxy pike is attached here. So this is called a protein conjugate, we call it here. So uh, when we are doing this process, uh, so you know, this is the protein which is already you know, approved by the FDA for suppose. And we are attaching a chemical to this protein and we are getting a protein conjugate. So what happens is like this, uh, uh, the end product that we get, the pegylated conjugated protein will become uh, a totally new defer, uh, a totally new chemical entity. Okay, so uh, we have to go through the entire regulatory process, starting from preclinical trials, toxicity studies, all those are to be established. And mostly it is to prove that, uh, you know, the pegylated protein or the pegylated compound that we have has got benefits as compared to the nave or parent molecule. So that's the objective of doing all these preclinical studies. And then it's not just one conjugate that will be manufactured for uh, a protein or for that matter, any molecule. There will be a series of uh, different conjugates that will be manufactured. And all those molecules, say some 10, 15 molecules, and then all of those will be screened in preclinical preclinical first in animal studies and also in toxicity studies. And then we'll be getting to know like uh, which is the best out of all those conjugates. And then that best one will be moving forward to the clinical trials. So before moving to the clinical trials, for this molecule, what we have, we have to apply for the NC again, you know, uh, or IND application again to the FDA uh, for US. And then after that, once we get the approval, we'll be proceeding for the uh, clin um, clinical studies. Phase one studies will be starting with it. First in human dosing will be done and then the molecule step-by-step step for, uh, moves forward and then it will be going for the NDA application after which the product becomes, uh, you know, can be marketed in the US. Okay, so, so this is the simple concept that we have for pegylation. And uh, what I'm stressing here is that this becomes a totally a new molecule and because of which uh, it's, a different, it's a new chemical entity that is deemed to be a new chemical entity. Okay. So now uh, here we have two things. One is the protein, which will be manufactured by different um, methods. And then for today's concept, we have uh, two things that are to be discussed. One is the peg, about the peg. So we'll brief, I'll briefly, uh, you know, list down what are the properties of peg and then how it will be manufactured All that brief touch upon this. And then uh, mostly about how this, uh, you know, conjugation will be done. And then uh, once it is marketed, like what are the advantages that we have got? over the parent molecules, so all those we'll be seeing now. So these are the contents of the presentation. So firstly, about the PEGS, polyethylene glycol molecule, we'll just see why it is, you know, uh, the molecule that we'll be using for, uh, for conjugation, why is it, there are many other molecules, why is it this specifically we'll be using? And uh, generally, in general, what is the synthesis uh, route for PEG molecule, polyethylene glycol, and then the structure for PEG, molecular weights, you know, pegylation, uh, or uh, 
peg molecule is you know it's manufactured by synthetic synthesis synthetic route so because of which there are uh, it's a polymerization kind of reaction so because of which we will be achieving the end peg molecule will be having a uh, different molecular weights and then we'll see using that peg that is achieved how we'll be pegylating the molecules which are already there and then we we'll, we'll touch upon the pegylation chemistry and then uh, why we have to use pegylation what advantages that it can bring to the molecule and uh, mostly we'll be focusing upon the biopharmaceuticals which are already marketed i'll give some examples on that you know let's start so uh, in general polyethylene glycol these are the general properties of polyethylene glycol as you all know this is a highly water soluble molecule and it is completely inert in the sense when it is administered into the body it does not have its own uh, efficacy in the system in the system so that's a good thing because because of which the actual uh, drug moiety will be uh, inheriting its properties but not the peg molecule and then it's uh, non toxic and non immunogenic and this is the reason why it is preferred to use uh, peg you know as a conjugate and then these are all biocompatible these are biocompatible once it is administered it does not pose any safety issues or toxicity issues so uh, mostly when we are combining the peg molecule to a protein so the most prominent advantage that it could bring into the molecule is that it is a non immunogenic you know sometimes it could make the protein non immunogenic as well so this is of very high importance especially in clinical trials and when it is dosed into the humans it's because you know you know the concept of immunogenicity so whenever a protein is uh, you know administered to the body it causes many immunogenic reactions phagocytosis happens all this happens and the efficacy of the molecule will be reduced so because we are introducing peg to the molecule and the peg will be surround uh, will be surrounding the uh, protein molecule it will uh, you know reduce the immunogenic properties of the native protein because of which it could have longer half life and it could have longer circulating time and the efficacy of the molecule could be, could be increased and the immunogenic reactions which are sometimes fatal in nature they could be uh, brought down so these are all the general properties of uh, uh, you know pg molecules so here we can just see what the how the structure of uh, pg looks like so this is the structure of pg and here i have also mentioned the structure of ethylene glycol so the repeating units of ethylene glycol makes polyethylene glycol so it's here uh, like this here it, it's a chain you know polymerization chain where n, n is the number of uh, repeating units with the hydroxyl group okay so Uh, this is the general synthesis of peg uh, peg molecule we have uh, ethylene oxide which is the main component and then it's uh, combined it's reacted with ethylene glycol in ratios to get polyethylene glycol so this is the general mechanism by which uh, pegs are synthesized so this is an exo exothermic process so here what you see is like you know peg molecule here polyethylene glycol it's most of the times it is linear earlier when it was used it was linear but there are also other things like you know branched polyethylene glycols branched in the sense there are like two chains of polyethylene glycol attached to a core for example it could be an aldehyde to which two chains of polyethylene glycol or four chains of polyethylene glycol are used so they are called like branched branched gly polyethylene glycols so forked structures so that's the that's how the actual polyethylene glycols are available pigs are available for conjugation okay so now uh, so in the previous slide we i had just shown you the structure of polyethylene glycol this is the structure but when we are using uh, for pegylation most of the times what we'll be using is like we'll be masking this one end hydroxyl group with methoxy group this is to avoid you know uh, this is because this group is reactive at both the ends we are end capping one of the ends so we will get mpeg so mpeg is the most commonly used uh, reagent for pegylation so it could be anything like you know the molecular weights could differ but most of the times it is end cap with methoxy groups that's how it is okay so now this is all about uh, the structures of peg and there are various kinds of pegs like you know pegs with very different kinds of molecular weights starting from pg 400 pg 500 to uh, going forward to 40000 daltons 
so these are the varying molecular weights so initially if we see like you know pegs with lower molecular weights they will be uh, you know liquid in nature so that's the reason we'll be uh, we'll be using it in our labs right for uh, solubility enhancement of uh, drug molecules and all that we'll be using this as an excipient we'll be using these all these pegs and uh, peg 3350 this is uh, you know also in solid solid in nature so all these molecules will be in solid in nature so 3350 it's it's also having uh, a like to property so you must be seeing some of the marketed products with this as the active molecule peg 3350 uh, more out it is a brand name of a, a like to which is mostly used in pediatric uh, patients for to relieve from constipation that's all and peg 8000 this is also there and this is also uh, used an excipient so almost most of these pegs that we have here they are used as excipients or some have you know active uh, properties itself uh, but for pegylation when it comes to pegylation uh, we'll be using the higher molecular weight pegs like 5000 daltons 20000 dalton so sometimes we'll be going more to 40000 dalton but mostly in the commercial products that we have or the products which are under research Mostly we have a PEG 20K as the conjugate. We'll be using PEG 20K. Okay. So all these molecules, I mean, so once the molecule is inert and it's uh, uh, toxicity free and it's uh, good, having good nature, it has to be obviously approved by the FDA before we use it in the, as an excipient or as a conjugate or anything. So all these molecules, most of these molecules are approved by uh, US FDA. And there are also other molecules. I had given a reference here, which, you can be using it is just IIG limits that we have for various pegs that are there. So, uh, so there for oral use, intravenous use, and also for dermal use. These pegs. Okay. So now this is all briefly about pegs, and now uh, we had seen how the peg molecule is synthesized and what are the various types of peg molecules that are available, and also the peg molecules that we'll be using for pegylation. So now uh, let us see what pigylation chemistry is. Uh, you know, generally when the pigylation chemistry had started, it was initially started with uh, you know protein molecules, pigylating the protein molecules. And later on, very later, it was extended to small molecules as well. So now most of the examples that you see here in this presentation will be of biologics because they are the ones which are like most of the marketed products with pegylation technology are biologics as compared to small molecules. They are hardly one or two, but most of them are in the research pipeline. Okay, so now we'll be having a protein. So if it is a protein, then there are plenty of amine groups that are available. So the amine group is a most commonly exploited group for pegylation technology. So here, amine, apart from amine group, amine groups, there are also carbohydrate, I mean, acid groups or hydroxyl groups, thiol groups, disulfide bonds, even there the pegylation could be done. So these are all the sites on the protein on which the pegylation could be done. That means we can target to those sites, the peg molecules to those sites, and then the peg gets attached there. So that's how the pegylation is actually done. And one more thing, as I have already mentioned, uh, once the molecule is pegylated, the pharmacokinetic properties as well as the pharmacodynamic properties, all those properties will be altered as compared to the parent molecule. So that's the reason why uh, we should choose the site on the protein or site on the molecule where the peg is to be introduced, peg reagent is to be introduced, because of which the kinetic properties can be modified. And uh, there are also different, I mean, when we are attaching a peg here like this to the uh, protein molecule, uh, it's not directly done, you know, it's not attached like that. There, there is something called linker, as I had mentioned here, permanent or cleavable linkers are there, uh, through which the peg molecule will be attached onto the protein or a drug molecule. I'll explain that in the upcoming slides on that. And also uh, the nature of the peg that we are using, the length of the peg, the shape of the peg, uh, the, the higher the molecular weight of the peg, all this. And also the end capping that, that is used on this peg molecule. All this will be changing the pharmacokinetic properties of the end product. That, that's a conjugate, peg conjugate. So this is briefly about the pigylation chemistry. Uh, so now I had in, in both the examples which I had shown here, uh, we are using peg, uh, protein molecule here, you know, the protein molecule we are using for pegylation. 
So this slide is just to show that it's not just the proteins that will be pegylated, but there are many other things like, you know, liposomes, peptides, carbohydrates, enzymes, you know, antibodies, uh, even small organic molecules and biologists, all these things could be pegylated. Uh, but for pharmaceutical use, most of the things that, uh, you know, most common things that are pegylated are small organic molecules. That means normal drugs that we have and also the biologics, you know, mostly protein in nature, these biologics, both these two things are most widely pegylated and also antibody fragments and peptides. Peptides are also Other things are of not so much of interest, but only these three things are of highly uh, exploited things. So this is just to show like what other applications this pegylation technology could have. Uh, so now this is an example of a small molecule, uh, docetaxel, and it is pegylated here. So in the picture, if you see, this is the peg and that is a branched peg. It's having four arms, if you see here, one, two, three, four. So these are the four arms of the peg. Uh, polyethylene glycol and on each of the arms we have drug loaded so these blue things uh, purple things which we have is the docetaxel molecule that means on one peg molecule on one molecule of peg we have four drug molecules loaded and as i had mentioned in between the drug molecule and the peg if you see here there is a linker you know? with the help of this linker we'll be placing this peg molecule onto the drug at desired position. So that this is uh, pegylated docetaxel. Uh, it was under research earlier. Uh, this is also a nectar molecule, next, uh, nectar 105. It's publicly available. You can just uh, go through the details later. Okay, so now this is the peg that is, uh, peg sorry, this is the molecule that is pegylated, docetaxel pegylated molecule with the help of linkers. This is just to show that there are linkers that will be used to pegylate onto the drug. Uh, so once it is administered into the body in vitro, so the peg will be releasing the docetaxel molecules. That means it's a releasable kind of linker, releasable linker will be using. So then the dose uh, slowly, slowly, see once at a time, one molecule is released and later the other, later the other. Likewise, all the molecules will be released and then the active drug will be available at the tumor site. Because docetaxel is an anti-cancer drug, it will be available at the tumor site. Later at the last part of the presentation, I could explain you like why these linkers will be, uh, why the drug will be detached from the linkers when it is at the tumor site. We could see that in detail. But for now, it is like uh, a pegylated molecule we have, and then it releases the drug at different rates. Uh, this is an example of docetoxin where the active drug is available at the tumor site. So this is an example of small molecule. In the previous slide, we had seen for the uh, you know, protein molecule, and now this is for the uh, small molecule. Yeah. So now we are, uh, uh, I had mentioned, just mentioned about the linkers that will be used for uh, you know, attaching the drug molecule to the peg. So now there are, uh, I just want you to focus here on these two things. One is a permanent linkage. That means the linker, which is permanently attaching the drug to the peg chain. And then there is also called a, a releasable linker where once it enters the systemic circulation or wherever it has to reach that the site of action, this linker will be releasing out the drug. You know? Here you can see the drug from the peg. So there are two kinds of things, it, it, uh, permanent linkers. They're also called stable pegs. It means all throughout the lifespan of the drug in the body, the peg will be attached to the drug or it could be released. So they are called releasable pegs. Okay. So now, uh, yeah, as you had seen here, this is the receptor site. And then uh, here you also you can see. So when it is having a permanent linkage, what happens is the peg molecule as such, along with the linker and the drug, together it acts on the active site or on the receptors. And here it's released and then only the drug acts here. So there are two kinds of things in pegylation. Majorly, it could be divided into two things. Stable pegs where, it, where they have permanent linkages and then releasable pegs where they have releasable linkage, linkages. Okay, now little more about uh, the linkers because this is the main uh, linkers, you know, they'll be helping us to ch uh, choose 
the site on the molecule in which the peg can be placed. That's one most important thing. But other than that, there are various other things about uh, linkers. You know, the position of them on the molecule, where the peg is placed, that could be determined by the linkers that we are using. So the placement of uh, uh, the peg on the molecule, as I had already mentioned, will be, uh, you know, determining the PK and PD properties, and also the main efficacy of the drug could be determined by this. Uh, so the, uh, actually what happens is that it's a conjugation bond, covalent bonds will be formed between the drug and the uh, linkers. So now, as I had already mentioned, there are two kinds of things and when we have to use releasable peg and when we have to use stable peg. So when we have to use stable peg is, you know, if we want uh, to change the kinetic profile completely for the drug, ADMV, everything if it has to be changed or to increase the uh, half-life of the drug and to, uh, to enhance the renal clearance, that means to reduce the renal clearance and to have better circulating half-life if we want if that is a desired property, that time we'll be using stable peg linkages. Okay, so when we'll be using releasable pegs, releasable pegs we'll be using when we just want controlled release, like what we had seen in Dostaxel example. So it's released at a controlled rate, but it's not released one at a time. So at that time, we'll be using releasable pegs. So at the site of action, only the drug will be available. It's not a pigylated drug that will be used. So it's called releasable. That's where we use releasable linkages. So that's briefly about the linkers uh, that are used in pigylation. Okay. So once we had pigylated a drug, uh, you know, uh, the assumption is that a one peg molecule and one drug molecule, that's how it is there. Or one peg molecule will be having multiple drug molecules, as we had seen in the forearm peg there. So, but in reality, what happens is like more than one peg, one peg molecule, even two, three or more peg molecules could be attached to one drug molecule. That's the uh, practical scenario that happens. Okay, so now if you run to a chromatographic profile, suppose if you take, uh, you know, a mixture of uh, pegylated compounds and if you run through the chromatography, this is how it looks like. So this is an example of a lysozyme. So it's an enzyme, uh, biologic. So to which uh, pegylation was done using three kinds of pegs. We have a peg 5K, peg 10K and peg 30K. So uh, using these three pegs, uh, lysozyme pegylation was done. So the bold line, the dotted line, and the red line, these three remarks uh, uh, marks the you know, size of the peg. So if you see here, so this red one is like the 30 LS. Here it is in the form of dipeg. That means two peg molecules are attached to the molecule. Or one peg molecule can be attached to the drug molecule. Similarly with 10K and also with 5K. Similarly, like uh, the same types of it. So this is how the separation could be done. Uh, and so if you want to purify the process, suppose if uh, only this is, uh, suppose if in 30, 30 peg a lysozyme, if you, your desired thing is only monopeg and not dipeg, then the reaction will be further, pro, uh, further done and then you'll be running the chromatography until this is the main purity peg. But this could also be there, but in uh, you know very low ratios. That again depends upon your uh, clinic, uh, sorry, preclinical trials, you know, which is the best peg that is to be used for uh, kinetic effect. So this is about the pharmacokinetic profile. Uh, now that's briefly we had seen about uh, pegs, what, uh, how they are synthesized and what are the various kinds of pegs that are available. And out of the pegs that are there, which are the ones that will be using for pegylation, we had seen that part and then what, how linkers will be used for the concept of releasable peg and also stable peg we had seen. Uh, and all that and this is also about the profile so now this is ab about uh, you know briefly about uh, pigylation and now let's see what advantages that pig pigylation could bring into the molecule uh, so as you all know as i had already mentioned peg is like you know highly soluble so once the peg molecule uh, is there over the molecule like over the drug molecule what happens is like it could increase the solubility of the molecule and also it could have longer uh, half-life and also improved bioavailability. Yeah, longer half-life is because it, uh, the peg molecules, you know, they are very bulky in nature. So once the, the molecular size increases, the renal, renal clearance rate will be uh, drastically reduced because of which the half-life can be improved as well as the bioavailability at the site could be improved. 
and also reduce the toxicity could be improved because the doses could be reduced because of increased half life and then reduce immunogenicity as i had already discussed this is one very important concept uh, that pegylation could bring into the proteins uh, yeah and then the reduced renal clearance rate uh, they could also improve the stability in uh, stability of the molecule at temperature different temperature conditions and ph conditions Uh, so, if it is a protein molecule and if it is liable to proteolysis, most of the because of which the half life would be reduced, it, it would be fastly you know eliminated from the body. So, in that case, if it is pegylated, peg will be actually helping to protect the protein molecule. It will be and I mean, you know, it will be covered by the peg molecule, and because of which it will be protecting the molecule that is inside the protein that is inside from proteolysis. And we could target actually to uh, to different sites which we want. and which i'll be discussing in the last slide and then lower volume of distribution we have and uh, uh, also when we have a pegylated molecule in the form of an injection suppose if it is injected uh, to the body you know as c root for example pegasus which is a very good example so once it is injected to the body the pegs will be slowly releasing the drug from the site so that that's the meaning like you know absorption could be reduced from the injection site and then the potency can be improved as i had already mentioned and then increased patient tolerance side effects could be reduced frequency of dosing could be reduced because of all this it could increase the efficacy of the molecule so this is again the same example uh, but in a pictorial form so this is a protein that we have and uh, it's a pegylate uh, it's a pegylated here so because of pegylation what happens is like the bulkiness of the Uh, pegylated conjugate increases so you can see here there is an increase in the size of the molecule from this this is the actual radius of the protein the holes by say so the radius has increased very much here so because of which uh, it 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 will be reducing the filtration renal filtration of the molecule and uh, because we have peg mo molecules here it could uh, you know when you are formulating a product or when you have to do some soluble studies all that so peg molecules will be highly useful pegylated molecules will be highly useful for solubility enhancement and as i had already mentioned see these are all uh, you know the protein is there inside the uh, uh, peg so because of which it has very reduced accessibility you know, accessibility to the enzymes that are there during circulation because of which the half life could be increased so all these three things could be achieved so in a nutshell if i have to say uh, the overall benefits that we have uh, what i had explained in the previous slides if i had to keep it in a nutshell so it has you know increased hydrodynamic volume because of which the renal clearance can be reduced and all that so it has uh, uh, reduced uptake by the reticular endothelial system and uh, all these are uh, the advantages and because of which increased solubility and renal clearance rate could be reduced and half life could be prominently increased and because of which there is uh, enhanced efficacy of the molecule that is pegylated as compared to its native parent molecule so these are all about the benefits that we have when we pegylate a molecule and now let us come to the you know products that are already marketed pegylated products which are already marketed so as i have already mentioned uh, so this platform technology pegylation technology was first explored uh, in biologics and uh, large molecules so i hope you all know like what large molecules are or biologics are and what small molecules normal chemical molecules are so this uh, uh, because of which when you see these examples most of these examples that we have here they're all you know biologics in the upcoming slides i also have couple of examples for small molecules but if, uh, you know we'll just see and then appreciate how pegylation has transformed the parent molecule as such okay so now these are all the molecules adhesion uh, you know manufactured by enzyme and then what are the sites where we we'll this is for your reference just what which is a site and this protein where the pegylation is done and what is the peg that is used and then what is the indication uh, But this this molecule is indicated or prescribed, and then the year in which the approval was done. So this you can just see it later. But uh, from this, I have picked few examples, and then I'll be explaining in detail how the you know PK profile is enhanced for those. Okay. So this is a blockbuster molecule, Nulasta, uh, that was manufactured that is manufactured by Amazon. I think it's in uh, 2002. It was approved by the US FDA. And, uh, it was registered by Amgen USA. 
So uh, the active moiety that we have here in Neulasta is like filgrastim. You know, filgrastim, that's the actual molecule which was pigylated. And you could see here uh, the you know, image of peg filgrastim. So this is uh, the round circles all this. This is the filgrastim parent molecule and it was pigylated here. So you, when it comes to this protein molecule, uh, protein filgrastim, which is a protein molecule, it has got 175 amino acids and it has got a molecular weight of uh, 19 kilodaltons. So that's about this parent molecule. And this molecule was attached to metho methoxy peg 20k. 20 kilodaltons. So together, the molecular weight becomes 39 kilodaltons. So uh, here, uh, the pegylation was done at the N-terminal residue of filgrastin. So that's how the pegylation was done. And this is the marketed product of Neulasta. It's an injectable again. And most of these are injectables because they are biologics. And uh, this is how it looks, refill syringe. And so what advantages the, does this pegylation has brought to filgrastim? Let's look into it. So now peg filgrastim is long acting form of filgrastim and it has increased the size of filgrastim and it becomes very large molecule for renal, renal clearance. That's what we had seen in the previous, the concept we had seen. And this is the practical example. So filgrastim, because of the bulkiness of uh, this uh, you know, 20K peg that is used, uh, renal clearance rate will be reduced. And look at the beauty of this. The half-life of filgrastim that we have, that's the parent molecule that we have is from you know 3.5 to 3.8 hours. But when it is pigylated, it has gone to as high as 42 hours, which is like almost 10 times, more than 10 times higher than the actual parent molecule. So, you know, the number of doses could be reduced, the cost of the patient could be reduced, the treatment cost, everything could be reduced with uh, pigylation technology. So this is an example that we have for uh, peg, peg fill grasping. So now let's look into another example here. So Pegasus, here we have peg interferon alpha 2A, again, manufactured by Roche. So, so this is the molecule, this is the marketed product that we have. Again, this is also given as a subcutaneous injection and uh, it's present in the form of a pre-filled syringe. This is for self-administration. And the indication is that, uh, sorry, in the previous thing I had forgot to mention the indication for this. So this is uh, used to enhance the immunity of the patient, especially when patients are under uh, chemotherapy treatment or something. So then pegfilgrastem will be administered to him, to them, to increase the immunity because uh, it will, the filgrastem that is there, that will be binding to the hemopoietic cells and then uh, the re this receptor is activated, CSF receptor, colony forming, uh, you know, stimulating factor will be enhanced. And then the white blood cells count could be increased here. So now, uh, again, coming back to this uh, Pegasus, this is used in the treatment of you know, hepatitis, hepatitis C and also in hepatitis B, but most commonly it is used for hepatitis C. Uh, the two in chronic patients where they're uh, already compromised with uh, liver dysfunction, cirrhosis and all that. So this is most widely used. Again, this is also given by subcutaneous injection here. Okay, so now let's look at the structure here. We have uh, the overall molecular weight of peg interferon is 60 kilodaltons, very big structure, right? Uh, but as such, if we see it for the interferon, interferon is uh, produced by recombinant technology, DNA recombinant technology. And uh, the, the actual molecular weight of this is only 20 kilodaltons. But when we are at at attaching this bismethoxy 40 K dalton peg to the, uh, interferon, the overall weight of uh, molecular weight becomes you know, 60 kilodaltons. Okay, so now we'll see where the peg is attached here. So the peg moiety is linked at the single site to the interferon alpha 2 via amide bond, amide bond to the lysine. So here also again, the lysine molecule on the protein was explored, explored, explored for uh, pigylation. Okay, now let us see how uh, you know it has enhanced the pharmacokinetic properties. So now, uh, because of pigylation, it has enhanced the half-life as compared to the uh, interferon as such. So half-life, in a sense, it's like it's almost doubled up. Uh, the half-life of peg interferon is almost doubled to that of interferon. And it has lower rate of absorption from the, uh, see what I had already mentioned earlier, you know, the lower rate of absorption from the site of injection because the peg releases it slowly. 
and then reduce the renal clearance. And most importantly, here in this molecule, pegylation, it reduces the immunogenicity. You know, sometimes immunogenicity will be uh, as fatal as, you know, it will be going into coma as well. Uh, so that, that's, uh, that's severe the immunogenic reactions could be. So we could uh, make the drug very much safer for the patient using pegylation technology. So that is very much proved in uh, this case with Pegasus molecule, which is peg interferon. And this is manufactured by Roche. This is also available in Indian market with the same, uh, uh, same brand name. So these are two examples that we have seen. And let's move to the next example that we have, which is Somovat, which is uh, peg Somovat. So this is uh, used to treat uh, acromegaly, so a condition where you know the bones and other body parts of uh, you know ad, um, humans which have grown up homeons will be uh, growing longer and longer. So that's called acromegaly, even the jaws part and all that. So in that case, uh, this is an analog of uh, human growth hormone. So this is the protein if you see here. So this is the analog of uh, human growth hormone. So that is the native molecule. Native molecule is nothing but a human growth hormone analog. And this has got 191 amino acids with a molecular weight of 22 kilodaltons. So these are all the amino acids that you see here, all these. And in this case, uh, it is pegylated and four to six pegylated peg molecules are attached to one single protein. So this is the protein chain that you see. This is one protein molecule, one protein chain, okay? So onto that here in this uh, picture, if you see there are five molecules that are attached, but in general, if you, uh, you know, screen it out, there will be four to six molecules that be attached to this protein. And the peg that is used is uh, five kilodaltons. That's the peg. So in uh, mostly uh, it is pegylated at on lysine, wherever you have lysine, it is uh, targeting that part. So it is pegylated there. And also at the uh, end terminal, end terminal and is also pegylated other than the lysine molecules. Yeah, you can see here, lysines and also the end terminal site is pegylated. So these are the, uh, you know, sites on the protein in on to which pegylation could be done. Okay, so now what are the advantages? Again, the similar to, uh, you know, what we had seen earlier. So slower rate of absorption from the injection site. This is also given as an SC injection. So slower rate of absorption we have. And uh, bound peg molecules reduce clearance, renal clearance. And then the mean half-life is like, you know, very high, you know, 74 to 172 hours. That's the half-life of this peg -ilated, of the peg -ilated molecule. Okay, so with these three examples, you know, these are a few of the things which are marketed and then we had seen how pegylation has enhanced the pharmacokinetic properties and how it has increased the efficiency of the molecule, efficacy of the molecule is, uh, you know, improved with uh, pegylation technology we had seen. So now let us look into some of the small molecules which are also pegylated. So as I have mentioned, sorry, <clears throat> as I had already mentioned earlier, uh, the, this is platform technology was also extended to the small molecule. So where you see, you'll be seeing that most of the molecules, small molecules that are pegylated, they are still under research stage in various stages of clinical phases. So this I had taken from a, an article from 2000, which was published in 2013. But, uh, you know, this molecule pegneloxol is already marketed. You know, it has passed phase three, phase four, and now it is uh, under in, it is in market with the brand name Movantic, which I'll be discussing in the next slide. So apart from that, uh, these are all the peg conjugates, naloxol, peg aeronauticon, and SN38, docetaxel. So these are, all the, these are the trade names, trade names in the sense on which it is registered. Like uh, the first, you know, almost three molecules that are here, nectars, the platform, tech, next, nectars, proprietary molecules, nectar 118, 102, and 105. So these are all the molecules. And there's one more uh, by enzyme. Okay. So now uh, these are other molecules like anti-tumor molecules like doxorubicin, methotrexate, paclitaxel, gemcitabin, and also antiviral drugs like, you know, acyclovir, zirovirin. These are also under uh, research. So now let's discuss about uh, one example, pegneloxol, that this first one, which is already there in the market. As I mentioned. So this is under the brand name Movantic. 
So it is manufactured by now it's licensed to uh, AstraZeneca. Initially, this was uh, this technology was developed for naloxone. This technology pigylation was done by Nectar Therapeutics, and later on it was licensed to uh, AstraZeneca. Uh, and it's indicated for uh, constipation, the two opioid in, in, induced constipation, which would be very, very severe and which is very, very common in the US, US stage. Okay, so now this is the native molecule, naloxone, we have here. And uh, we have uh, naloxone, the pegylated molecule, naloxone here. So here, the six alpha hydroxy group of naloxone is connected via an ether linkage to hydroxyl group of this is the monomethyl here there should be a methoxy group so monomethoxy group is attached to the naloxone parent naloxone molecule okay and here this uh, so this is this is how the pigylation is done onto this molecule and uh, you could see here the picture of mobantic tablets this is so this is the first example that we are seeing where you know pigylation was used for oral route of administration earlier examples were all uh, you know uh, Intra subcutaneous or all parenteral routes of administration. So here we are using it for oral route of administration. Okay. Uh, earlier we had seen like how pigylation had uh, had uh, you know improved the half life, how it had reduced the clearance rate and all that. But here the beauty of this product, the beauty of this technology for this molecule is that uh, you know it prevents the molecule from entering the blood brain barrier because these are all you know, narcotic products. So it's, uh, it, it will induce uh, sleep and all that. Uh, so, so this technology could be exploited here to you know, reduce because of the bulkiness of the molecule, it will not cross the blood brain barrier and selectively it acts only on the peripheral parts of the body. And therefore uh, peripheral uh, opioid in, induced constipation could be reduced. Okay, so this is uh, this is about a small molecule which is marketed, and now uh, there's one more example where uh, we have under research erinotecan peg one o two which we had uh, sorry nectar one o two which we had seen. So here uh, the peg molecule is attached to the erinotecan molecule. Uh, so this is what we are looking at image. This image, you know, it's different. It's like you know the four arm peg. There's a peg which is four armed and then the drug is attached here, erinotecan drug. That means the drug is loaded onto all the four uh, ends of the peg molecule. So here, erinotecan uh, uses uh, I mean, the same thing. The peg is used as a carrier and then the four arms onto which the drug is loaded. And uh, yeah, so in preclinical trials, accumulation of uh, peg in tumor. So this is, irinotecan is an anti-cancer drug. So it has to get accumulated in the cancer cells. So we had seen in the preclinical trials that as compared to irinotecan, when it is pigylated and it's in a pigylated form, it is accumulated in the tumor 300 times more as compared to its, so it's like, you know, tremendous, huge. It's a huge impact that pigylation is making to this molecule, irinotecan. Uh, and due to large molecular weight, it, uh, see, whenever there is a cancer, a solid tumors, for example, you know, whenever there are solid tumors, they'll be having leaky vasculature. So we can target these high molecular weight pegylated molecules onto the, those solid tumors as compared to uh, normal, you know, uh, normal parts, normal vasculature where we have a uh, normal these things will not be impacted. That means selectively we can target to those cancer sites itself using pigylation technology here. So we had seen how renal clearance can be uh, reduced and how half-life can be improved. And we had also seen how to reduce the uh, entry into the blood brain barrier, how that can be reduced. We had seen that's uh, uh, helpful there. And here, most importantly, we had also seen how we could target selectively to the uh, tumor cells itself. That also we had seen. Okay, so now, uh, so this is all about the examples that we have on the marketed products. Uh, so now I have a couple of slides where, you know, we, you can see and appreciate like how you can be targeting to specific cells using pigylation technology. So this is what it is. So this is called passive targeting. So I had already, we had already seen like earlier, we know now what it is, how a peg molecule is attached to the drug with the help of a linker. So we have this peg molecule, pegylated molecule here. Uh, these are also called products because it will be released once it is in the systemic circulation. So now it will be crossing the solubility barrier and then enters the extracellular space. 
we have a tumor cell here, for example, we have a tumor cell and this is the extracellular space of the tumor cell. And this is the intracellular space of the tumor cell. So once the drug enters here, the uh, enters the extracellular space near, and once it is near to the tumor cells, what happens is the linker releases the drug from the peg here. That means it is cleaved here. It's cleaved and the drug is available at the site for the tumor cell. And now any guesses why uh, uh, why it is releasing only near the tumor cells? Because uh, you already know that the, uh, you know the environment, the external environment near the tumor cells will be acidic in nature. And so, if we are attaching an acidic linker here, so it selectively releases drug only near the tumor cells, and then the drug can be readily uptaken by the tumor cells, and then these cells can be killed there. The apoptosis of tumor cells could be done here. So this is uh, one of the beautiful examples where pegylation technology can be used to selectively target using acid linkers. We have here acid linkers onto the uh, tumor cells. So that's one thing. And this is like passive targeting we call. Okay. The same thing, uh, these, all these examples that we have here is to target the tumor cells. And now we have one more thing where, you know, it's like active targeting. So what we have is, you know, we have uh, a, a drug and the linker here. And then we'll be attaching a ligand peg and we will be attaching a ligand to the peg, one of the end of the peg, we'll be attaching a ligand. And this ligand is specific only to the tumor cells. Okay, so this molecule is ready now. And once it crosses the solubility barrier and once it reaches the tumor environment, what happens is like, this, here we are using a stable peg. In the previous example, it was a releasable peg. So it was released in the extracellular space but now it's not released here. So this ligand gets binded to the receptor on the tumor cells. It selectively binds to these receptors because of which you know, the, uh, the, the whole molecule will be uptaken by the tumor cell here. And later on the drug will be acting on the uh, nucleus of the, uh, of the tumor cell. And then the other part will be removed out by endosomes or lysosomes. It will be taken up, taken up by them. So this is like active targeting in the sense the whole molecule is uh, engulfed by the endo by endocytosis process. It will be taken up by the uh, the whole pegylated molecule will be taken up by the tumor cells. In the previous example, it was a releasable peg that was used, which we had already seen. Okay. So now one more example of uh, active targeting. This is also again with uh, you know acid sensitive. Uh, product, a linker that will be used and that will be cleaved in the extracellular space. So this is one more example that I have. So the drug we have, the linker we have, and then the targeting moiety we have. And similarly, when we have this, the linker, the peg molecule is attached to the receptor here, but it's not engulfed by this. It's not engulfed by this, okay? But it will be cleavaged here. It's a mixture of first two examples, I could say. So what happens is like the drug that is uh, here again, we have acidic environment. So this, uh, you know, uh, what I have to say, yeah, the binding of the, uh, you know, uh, ligand to this receptor will make sure that the drug is available exactly at uh, the tumor environment. So because of which the drug could be easily taken up by the tumor cells and then tumor cell apoptosis cell death happens. So this is, these are all, uh, you know, the technologies by which we could selectively target the drugs. So by now, uh, I'm almost at the end of the presentation. Just one more slide to just sum up what we had already, I had already spoke today. So we had uh, primarily seen what the pegs are and what different kinds of pegs that are available uh, for pegylation, uh, a bit more focus on pegylation and how pegylation will be done. We had seen how linkers will be used and how linkers will be uh, helping to, you know, uh, target a particular molecule, uh, particular site on which on the molecule where pegylation could be done. So that's one thing. And we had seen about releasable pegs and uh, stable non-releasable pegs. And in which uh, scenario we have to use a releasable peg and in which scenario we have to use uh, uh, a stable peg we had seen. And we had seen a couple of examples, which are like marketed examples, pigalated products, uh, where we had seen some biologics and also some small molecules we had seen. And in the ending, we had already, uh, we had seen uh, most interesting thing of this presentation uh, for me, I know, I think it's also for you, how we could target, uh, you know, the drug molecules onto the tumor environment, specifically with pigalation technology that we had seen. 
Okay. So in summary, so pegylation offers you know advantages as compared to its base molecule, parent molecule, uh, with respect to increasing the half life, reducing the immunogenicity, and all that. And we could also do targeting, and we could do we could achieve targeted therapies with the pegylation technology. And uh, one more important point to mention is that uh, the molecular weight of the peg. Uh, peg conjugate that we are using and uh, its structural modifications, even the pegs that are there that could be structurally altered, you know, to change the uh, profile of the drug during the pegylation, I mean, before the pegylation process, the peg itself will be modified and then it will be pegylated so that we could achieve uh, the desired pharmacokinetic profile that could also be done with this. So this is all uh, the summary of uh, today's presentation. Thank you all for patient listening. So I'm open for questions. If there are any questions uh, we could take up. Thank you, Kiran Mai. Thank you, ma'am. Hey, we have a question from one participant, Dinesh Kumar. Yeah, ma'am. What is the fate of the PEG? after the drug is released at the site of action? Okay, how it would be cleared from the body, that's the question. Yeah, what is the fate of the PEG? Yeah, so after what happens the... is like once the drug is released, we'll be having all these peg molecules. There, are, uh, I mean, as I had already mentioned, they are like, uh, you know, non-toxic in nature. So they'll not be producing any harm to any of the internal body parts, but it could be removed by, you know, hepatic metabolism and all those things. It could be removed from the body. It will be cleared out from the body. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Kiran Mai, for your valuable information about PEG, pegylation of pharmaceuticals. So thank you for this session. So thank you for the, all the participants who have actively participated in this webinar. Now it is my immense pleasure to vote of thanks. Now I thank to Kiran Mai for, sorry. Uh, now I thank to Kiran Mai for accepting our invitation and given valuable information. Now I thank to our principal sir for his valuable support to carry this webinar. And also I thank to Siddhartha Academy of General and Technical Education for his support and model support for everything to conduct this type of webinars. And also I thank to my department, Sarala Madam and Sarta Madam Devada sir for his continuous support. And also I thank to for electronic support for Madhu sir and Ravi Shankar sir. And also thank to each and everyone for conducting this session very successful manner. And thank you, thank you very much. Kiran Mai, once again, I am very much thank you for you. Thank you, ma'am, and thank you to you all, uh, you know, for organizing me, for inviting me to, you know, to interact with, uh, with you all. It's my pleasure to be with you today. Uh, a special thanks to you, ma'am, and also to uh, Sir Deval Rao, sir, uh, for taking me in for this kind of presentation. I'm really happy to interact with you all. If there are any further questions, I'll be more than happy to answer. Uh, I have some backup slides as well because of time constraint, I could not explain them, but they could in detail tell about, you know, pegylation chemistry and also the linkers that are used and what linkers have that are to be used in pegylation, all that, that, that is also there. If somebody is interested and uh, if they can approach me, I'll definitely share them. And uh, anytime they can, on this technology, if there are any questions, I'll be more than happy to answer. Thank you all for your time. Uh, thank you to Siddhartha College of Pharmacy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Kiran Mai. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you, Kiran Mai, for your nice presentation and uh, enlightened uh, presentation also. Thank you very much. And uh, we wish to conduct some more also in future with, uh, with your support. Thank you. Sure, sir. Definitely. I'll be more than happy. And thank you, Anpama and his, uh, our team also for uh, conducting a nice uh, webinar thank you. on this thank latest topic. Department talk. of Chemistry. Thank you. Thank you. Good luck. Good luck. Thank you so thank much. You. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Okay. okay. Thank, thank you, principal, sir. Okay, Ramanu. Ramanu, leave us, sir. Ah, okay. Thank you, sir. Okay, Ramanu. Thank you, Kiran. Bye. Take care.